Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue solving problems um, related to um, usage of trigonometry in, in geometry. So it's geometrical problems, but uh, um, a big part of it uh, is supposed to be using the trigonometry. Um, there are many, many problems, so um, I'm sure I will not cover um, everything. However, um, I'm trying to um, to put together uh, some material, some educational material, which should be relatively um, universal as far as different aspects of trigonometry um, is, is concerned. So, here are these problems. Um, if you did not spend any time solving them yourself, just using the unizor.com, this is the problem number, problems, set of problems number one um, in the uh, trigonometric geometry uh, chapter. Um, so if you didn't do anything just by yourself, I do recommend you just to pause this particular video and spend time trying to solve these problems yourself. They are very helpful, educational, they develop your creativity, your intelligence, so it's definitely a must. Because if you don't do anything yourself, uh, if you just consume information, which I'm presenting, um, then the usefulness of these lessons is, is, is really limited. Anyway, so let's let's just solve all these problems. Where is my... Okay, here it is. Okay. Problem number one. Prove that in any triangle AB sine square of gamma over 2 equals to P minus A, P minus B. Now, I'm using um, the symbolics which are introduced in the previous lecture. And uh, basically, A, B, and C are uh, sides of the triangle. which lie opposite to vertices, which are similarly called by using the capital letters. Now, the angles are alpha, beta, and gamma. Again, alphabetically. And uh, lowercase p is half the perimeter. So that's the abbreviation, that's the symbolics which I'm using here. And I will try to use it more or less universally. So we have to prove that in any triangle this is true. Well, um, what am I thinking about um, the approach to, to solve this particular problem? First of all, nobody likes something in square if there is a, um, some way to, to, to bring down the power to one. And there is a way, actually. Remember, uh, cosine of 2 phi equals to cosine uh, square phi minus sine square phi. Or if we express cosine square as 1 minus sine square, it will be 1 minus 2 sine square phi, from which I can solve sine square phi is equal to uh, 1 minus cosine 2 phi over 2, right? So I'm going to use this formula to convert sine square of gamma over 2. Now phi is gamma over 2, so it's 1 minus cosine of double angle, which is gamma over 2. That's something which looks much simpler, right? So I will substitute it over there and see what happens. So 1 minus cosine gamma over 2 instead of this. So what happens is um, AB times 1 minus cosine gamma um, over 2 equals. Now, I will um, express the half of the perimeter with whatever the definition actually is. So, 
minus a would be minus a, which means minus 2a would be minus a plus 2. Uh, uh, so it would be minus a plus b plus c over 2. Now, if, if it's p minus b, it would be a minus b plus c over 2. All right? If it's minus b, uh, and I'm using the common denominator 2, it would be minus 2b, so it's right, exactly. All right, now, so what we can do is we can multiply everything by 4, Right, so we will not, we will get rid of, of of the denominator. So on the top I will have. So it's, if I multiply by four, and this is two, so I still have two here. So it's two ab times one minus cosine. So I will multiply it separately. Gamma equals. Now this I don't have any denominators anymore, right? So. What is this? It's C, okay, it's C plus A minus B, which is this, and C minus A minus B, which is this, right? This is C plus A plus B, and this is C minus A plus B. Why did I do it? Because it's easier for me. Right now it's, remember, X minus Y, X plus Y, it's x squared minus y squared, right? So x is c, and uh, and y is a minus b. So my right part, 2ab minus 2ab cosine gamma equals, my right part is c squared minus a minus b squared. Or I can open up this square, and I will have what a square minus 2ab plus b square, right? And everything with a minus sign. So I will have minus a square, now plus 2ab, and minus b square, right? So what's left? Well, 2ab is immediately out, and I have, if I will uh, bring a square and b square uh, to the left by edging this to both sides, I will have a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine gamma equals c square. Now, what is this? Well, you have to recognize this. This is a law of cosine, right? This is the law of cosines. And um, I did present this law in one of the previous lectures about uh, trigonometric identities. Um, so this is a true statement. So from this, using these transformations, we came to this. This is true. Does it mean that this is true? Well, not exactly. What we have to do really is to say this very important phrase. Since all uh, transformations are reversible, they're all invariant transformations. We didn't lose anything. We didn't add anything. This is all invariant and reversible transformation. So from here, I can go to here, to here, to here, and here. And that's the proof, because from true statement, we came to this one. And that's the end of the proof. OK, next. Actually, it's very similar. A, B times cosine square of gamma over 2 equals P, P minus C. Where, again, A and B and C are sides. P is half a perimeter. And gamma is an angle which is opposite to C side. Now, Again, I will do exactly the same in the beginning. I don't like the cosine square of gamma over 2. I would like to convert it into, um, into the first, uh, first power of, of, of something. So how can it be done? Well, again, let's remember cosine of 2 phi is equal to cosine square phi minus sine square phi, right? 
That's the only thing which I remember. Everything else I derived. Now I will express sine as 1 minus cosine. So what I will have is minus, so it will be cosine squared 5 minus 1 plus cosine squared 5, which is 2 cosine squared 5 minus 1, from which we conclude that cosine squared 5 is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 phi over 2, right? And that's what I'm going to use here. So phi would be gamma over 2, 2 phi would be gamma. So my next formula is this. Um, a, B times 1 plus cosine gamma over 2 equals, and again from uh, the formula for P, P is A plus B plus C over 2, and if I will subtract C from this, it would be A plus B minus C over 2, right? So I have to prove that. Again, multiply by 4, so this would be 2, so it's 2AB plus 2AB cosine gamma, and here it's A plus B plus C. And, um, sorry, it's A plus B plus C and A plus B minus C, right? So it's A plus B square minus C square, right? It's A plus B square minus C square. So 2AB plus 2AB cosine gamma equals uh, a square plus 2ab plus b square minus c square. 2ab goes out. I add c square to this, and I subtract 2ab cosine to there, and I will get c square equals to a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine gamma, which is exactly the same law of cosine and this is a true statement for any triangle. And from this, we can reverse all these transformations to get to this, and that's the end of the proof. So in both cases, we were using some um, Simple transformation, actually two different transformations. We expressed sine square or cosine square of half of gamma with the cosine of gamma. That's number one. So we were using basically the formula for a cosine of double angle. Uh, and the second transformation was uh, the law of cosines. Okay. okay, next. Next we are going to prove the following formula. S, which is the area of a triangle, equals to one-fourth of a square cotangent alpha plus b square cotangent beta plus c square cotangent gamma. We have to prove this formula. Well, we have many different ways, actually, to express the area, right? Um, it's, a, let's say, a side times an altitude which falls onto this side divided by 2. Or we had some formula which uh, I proved in the previous uh, lecture about um, using the radius of the circumscribed circle. Um, another formula for area of triangle um, was the... Uh, Heron's formula, um, which I have derived a long, long time ago in the geometry chapter, uh, which was dedicated to the area of triangle. So this is yet another formula for, for, for the uh, um, area of a triangle. So we express the area in terms of sides and angles. Okay. Let's prove it. Let's circumscribe a circle around our triangle. 
Okay. Now, uh, this is a perpendicular from the center onto this side. And this is the radius. Now, this is R. Now, this is B. So this is B over 2 and this is B over 2. Right? You remember that the perpendicular in the isosceles triangle uh, to uh, um, to the base is actually not only the altitude but also the median and the bisector of the angle. Now the AOC angle is a central angle supported by this by this arc. ABC, which is beta, is an inscribed uh, angle supported by the same arc, and we know that the central angle twice as big as the corresponding inscribed angle if they are supported by the same arc. And this is half of the central angle, so this is also beta, and this is beta. Now, let's consider this particular triangle. Uh, let's say this is D. Triangle AOD. What do we know about this triangle? This is a right triangle. This is AG is one catetus and OG is another catetus, right? Now, AG is equal to B over 2. OG is equal to, well, think about this way. If you divide OG by AG, OG by AG, this is a cotangent of beta, of this angle, right? From which we can conclude that OG is equal to AG, which is B over 2, times cotangent beta. So the area, the area of this triangle, the area of triangle AOD is equal to one catetus, which is AD, B2, times another catetus, which is B squared over 4 and cotangent beta. Now, exactly the same way, if we draw this, we can have the area of AOB, triangle AOB, is equal to, this is C and this is A, right? So this would be C square over 4 cotangent gamma. And area of uh, B, uh, BOC. B O C is equal to uh, A square over 4 cotangent of. And obviously, if you add all these together, you will get this formula. All right? So what did we use here? Well, we used a couple of geometric properties, like, for instance, that inscribed angle is half of the corresponding central angle if they are supported by the same arc. Then we were using the property of isosceles triangle AOC. And by the way, it's isosceles because AO is a radius and OC is a radius, right? O is the center. So in this isosceles triangle, the altitude is the same as uh, median and, and angle bisector. And that's, and that's what actually made triangle AOD simultaneously the right triangle and the one which has this angle equals to beta. Everything else is basically a definition of a cotangent and area. Everything else is simple. I have the last problem. Prove that 
R is a um, radius of circumscribed circle times HA times HB times HC. These are three altitudes corresponding with two words side A, B, and C equals to A squared, B squared, C squared. So we have to prove that this is true for any uh, triangle. Okay, now let me draw exactly the same picture as before. Now, this is angle beta, and this, as we have concluded, is angle beta as well. Now, this is... It's opposite to B, so this is B over 2, and this is B over 2. And this is R. So R uh, is equal to, well, let's think about it. B over 2 divided by R is a sign of beta, right? So R is equal to B over 2 divided by sine of beta, right? which is exactly similar to, if I will use this or this, I will have R from this particular triangle uh, equal to C over 2 sine of gamma, and in this particular triangle, in this particular triangle, very similar. So this is this is alpha, now this is alpha, and this is gamma, uh, equals to A over 2 sine um, alpha, right? So this is simple. This is, again, from this drawing, it's kind of obvious, and we were using this many times before. Now, using this, Instead of R cube, the first R from the R cube I will replace with this, the second with this, and the third with this. So what will I have? I will have A, B, C divided by sine A alpha, sine beta, and sine gamma. 2 by 2 by 2, it will be 8, and this 8, it will be... Uh, 1, it will be reduced, times HA, times HB, times HC. So that's what I will have on the left. So instead of R cube, I put, this is R, this is another R, and this is the third R. This would gives me ABC on the top, and um, the product of signs on the bottom, and the 2 by 2 by 2, and this 8 will be reduced to 1, and I have to prove this. or this, or this, right? So far, everything is equivalent, reversible. So instead of proving this, I will prove this. Let me just draw another picture where it would become kind of obvious. If you have a triangle, A, B, C, this is H, A, now this is gamma, alpha, beta. Now, HA, HA, this is angle beta. So if I divide HA by C, I will have a sine of beta, right? This is an opposite catheters. 
So H A is equal to C times sine beta. Okay. How about H B? Okay. H B is A times sine gamma. Right? HB divided by A is a sine of gamma. So HB is equal to A times sine of gamma. Great. And the last one. This is HC. B times sine of alpha, right? Because HC, HC divided by, by, by B would be the sine of gamma. So it's B sine of gamma, uh, sine of alpha. So. And if you multiply these three, you will get this. And the story. Well, these are three relatively simple problems. And um, what I recommend you to do is uh, just by yourself go through all these uh, four problems and try to do it yourself again after you have listened to this lecture just to make sure that you remember everything and it's fresh, etc. And by all means, don't hesitate to um, sign in as a student to unisor.com, have somebody else, or, or maybe yourself under a different name, uh, sign in as a supervisor, and uh, make sure that you uh, are enrolled in some uh, course, and uh, then you can take exams, you can take as many times as you want, everything is completely free and no, 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 no checking is done. So uh, just you know, verify whether you are mastering this material. So thanks very much. That's it for today. Good luck.